Okay, hi Phoebe, it's great to see you and thank you for taking part in Synod for us. Um, I first, well I've seen you a couple of times talking, but I uh, heard you talking at council recently and I was really impressed. I was really impressed by everything that you had to uh, say. Um, but there was a couple of things that I'd like to talk to you about today, if I may. Um, one of the things that you talked about was in this presidential that you, year that you've had, which has been quite different, um, you talked to the council about the fact that in lockdown, it's been a different year for you, but it's given you lots of opportunities that might not have otherwise, um, you might not have otherwise had uh, to visit smaller groups. I wondered if today that you could share with us what stories and lessons that you've had and encounters and what they've shown you. Yeah, I think it's been such a, a good opportunity and, and hi, by the way, thank you for having me. Um, it's been such an important opportunity, I think, because um, obviously every youth president's year is different, but I think this year what's been different is I've had that insight into children and young people's lives and really going to meet and get to know children and young people within their youth groups rather than maybe a, a big district event or a big youth event where sometimes it can be quite difficult to talk to children and young people on such a, a conversational level. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that I've learned is that children and young people really thrive when they have a good relationship with their ministers and with their youth um, workers or youth leaders. Um, I think I, one of the prime examples I can think of is when I visited a group on the Isle of Man and um, it was four young girls and just they were so faith filled and had so much fire in their belly for God and was ready to be fed, to know more, to like just explore um, their faith and their spirituality. And, and so much of that had, they, they'd built such a good relationship between each other. And they also had such a good relationship with the lady who ran the youth group. Um, and I think that that showed me that there's so much that can be done at a local sort of context and having that that ability for children and young people to be mentored to be guided is so important and I think children and young people really need that especially during and post pandemic they need that opportunity to just be themselves and explore not just spirituality just being a teenager or being a young person and that safety to be, it's okay to get it wrong or to ask questions because all teenagers get it wrong and ask questions. Um, and, and at the same time, it also taught me how valuable that fellowship between um, children and people across the connection is. Um, I've met groups who had such a positive experience of three generate or you know big youth events. And, and it showed them that they weren't on their own and they there were other children and people who were just like them so I think the thing that I've learned this year is these things really need to sit hand in hand you need to have these big events with with children and people coming together across the connection to be with each other and meet together but you also need to have that local support that that local enabling so that children and young people can thrive um, and the only um, and a really crucial thing that I've learned is that children and young people do want to participate. They want to be part of church and, and not part of church as we put them in a box to be part of, but how they want to contribute. Um, you know, whether it's music or reading or art, um, there's a group in Bishop Auckland and they um, employ part-time um, these young people and, and the young people contribute to the work of the church but in very different ways so there's um, an artist who does sort of like conceptual digital art for the church there's one who does um, hymns and records the hymns there's another young person who writes the prayers there's a couple who um write um they run all the technology and and they've really helped the church to thrive but that's because the church have allowed them to contribute how they feel able to and the gifts that they have. And I think that that's such a powerful message to say that children and young people do want to participate. You've just got to allow them to in the way that 
they feel able to. Um, and that might be quite challenging because it forces us to do things slightly differently. Um, so those are probably the biggest takeaways I've had from this year. That, that sounds absolutely amazing. Um, you mentioned the Regenerate. So I'd just like to go back to you because when we were at council, one of the most interesting, they asked if they could ask you questions, which you generously, uh, without any uh, prior notice, said yes. And so from the floor, somebody said to you, um, how could um, 3 generate help local churches to grow? And I was really inspired by your answer because you came back to them and said, actually, churches grow at gra grassroots. Um, and I thought, yes, that was really good. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, so I think um, the thing that I felt quite strongly is that... Um, it's almost going back to what I said before, that you can have children and young people who have gone to three generate and they've been spirit filled and that's amazing and that's fantastic. And I love three generate. I love the work that three generate do. I think it's fantastic. But that that energy and that passion and that fire needs to be fed and nurtured and allowed to sort of blossom in a local church context. And, you know, children and young people are likely to know about Three Generate if they're attached to a local church or a local congregation. Um, it, it's about that relationship being harnessed and, and grown and, and um, nourished, like I say, to enable children and young people to continue their faith journeys all year round and to have that sort of local support, which is so important. Um, and I think that the groups that I've met have shown that the children and young people who've had the most positive experiences of church and also the most sort of positive experience of faith are those who've had such a really good relationship with their local congregation. Um, and I think that that's really powerful and three generate cannot replace the work that needs to be done at a local context it, it's it's sort of they work hand in hand and they need to be done together in order for children and young people and the church to grow um so i think that that's really exciting actually um because i can just see children and young people being in, enabled to flourish and and that support at local church level is so important to be able to do that that's brilliant thank you that that's really helpful um you spoke at the council about the high priority agenda of mental health and climate change for children and young people can you say a little bit more about that yes so um children and young people um one of the questions i always ask when i go to visit groups is what should the church care about um and often the, the most common answer is mental health and uh, care about the climate crisis. Um, I think children and young people are acutely aware of the impact that the pandemic has had on mental health issues. Um, I think that children and young people are acutely aware of the challenges that we face in terms of responding to the climate crisis. Um, children and young people are really clued up. Um, I. I think that there's sometimes a misconception that it's a very sort of um, simple, simplistic look at, at the world. And actually there are so many children and people who have a really good depth of understanding. Um, among other things that children and people care about, it is about equality, about um, looking after those who are in poverty and tackling um, the causes of poverty and homelessness. Um, and they're really passionate about sharing faith. Uh, which I thought was really, uh, really good. Um, so I think it's, again, about children and young people being um, prophetic voices and the church listening to that within all contexts. So district-wide, connection-wide, and again, local churches going, well, children and young people are trying to hold us accountable. How can we respond to that? Um, and I think particularly with mental health um, and supporting children and people in maintaining good mental health is that again the local church needs to help children and people do that one of the most common things I've heard back is we don't hear about these issues being preached about from the pulpit why aren't 
ministers or preachers talking about mental health in their service, services or um, about the environment in their services. Um, and I think that's a really challenging um, question about how we link our calling as Christians to respond to the climate crisis, to respond to mental health issues and our faith and the theology around that. And I think there's a hunger from children and young people to learn about, well, what would Jesus do? What, what, what did Jesus say about these things? And of course he didn't say about the environment, but um, I, I think there's a powerful theology in thinking, not what would Jesus do as a 33 year old Palestinian man, but what would Jesus do as a white 19 year old girl from Telford? And I think that's what children and young people might need to hear and be helped with exploring. That, that's really interesting. We um, are today in our synod um, launching a mental health uh, workbook um, and we're, we've got a manifesto which we're rolling out across the district to enable all our uh, people to flourish uh, and to tackle the stigma of mental health. So uh, that uh, comes right into our one of our, our priorities across uh, the district. So I'm really pleased that um, we seem to be on the same path um, with that, so thank you for sharing that with us. Um, finally, moving forward, uh, you said that children and young people don't necessarily want to come into our church buildings. Um, that's a challenge for us, uh, not something that everybody wants to hear, uh, but I think it's a really strong message that you said at council and one that I certainly heard. You gave an example of things like running an, an alpha course um, and perhaps not running one in a church building, but running one in a home um, is a good way for us to move forward. Can you give us, um, help us with more ways to help us to engage with children and young people as we move forward? Yeah, so I think um, what, I, what I find, I think, sorry, let me start that again. I think that um, the response that I gave to the, the question where I answered, let's, let's not invite children and young people into our church is we, we have a tendency to try and bring people, young people to us rather than us going out to children and young people. Yeah. And I think that um, children and young people respond so well when they're in a situation or a context where they feel safe and they feel um, is, is not sort of uncharted territory. Um, you know, inviting a child or young person to a church that they've never been into instantly puts them at an ease in a lot of cases. So go to um, a local park and just invite sort of prayer. If you need prayer, have, here's some prayer. Um, run um, alpha courses um, in places where it's, you know, not a church and a very safe, a safe environment. Um, and, and just go to where children and young people at, um, children and young people, a lot of them are at schools. How can you provide chaplaincy to children and young people in school? Um, and I think that for me, lots of the groups that I already met, that I met had a re relationship where they'd already gone to church. They'd already knocked down that barrier of, oh, this is a church building. And I think that that showed me children and young people once they've broken down that barrier are much more open and uh, willing to think about things like faith but going in straight away with that can sometimes be quite challenging so yeah let's go to where children and young people are at and and just let them be and let them explore faith and spirituality in a way that is comfortable to them and I think that um, having an authenticity about doing that and not seeming to have an agenda it, it, it's really helpful for children and young people because it knows that it allows them to think that they're safe and there's not a right answer and a wrong answer um, and I think um, for children and young people that allows them to meet Jesus in a way that is authentic to them and um, builds a healthy relationship with faith and I think that's so important. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Phoebe, thank you for joining us today. Um, 
Thank you for sharing in our synod today um, and we wish you uh, all the best in the rest of this presidential year. May I just take a moment to pray for you. Gracious and life-giving God, we give thanks for the life and witness of Phoebe. We pray your blessings to pour abundantly upon her as she continues this uh, life, ministry and witness in your name. In these difficult and challenging times, may you put your arms around her, may you surround her with love and may she feel you walking alongside her in the conversations that she has, in the, in the people that she meets, even through these difficult, um, challenging times of of screens uh, but may these conversations be filled with the Holy Spirit and may these interactions be faith-filled. We pray that you walk beside her in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for having me. Thank you Phoebe. God bless.